once again bishop good morning lor radio fam good morning youtube fam good morning facebook fam actually i i, I did speak to sister imogene the other day hello sister imogene how are you <laughs> yeah i did i did i did so you know um it's communion morning by the way everyone so i trust that you have the bread of life the body of christ okay and you have the cup of blessing the blood of jesus okay get ready get ready get ready it's communion morning come on you know we're excited on communion morning here okay so this is the day that the lord have made we rejoice and we're glad to be in it because god is in it with us and with god with us ah oh, we have already won amen praise the lord you know i want to appeal a couple of things um if you haven't yet gotten the book as the days of trees so are we you should if the name alone is a blessing straight out of the word of god i'm not making it up right bishop it is so isn't it it is so it is so it is so there there's also another book for you to get from my friend danette uh beautifully broken no beautifully blessed all right so to god be the glory i would also like to appeal that you pray for um Reverend Richard Honeywell and his wife, Pastor Karen uh, Honeywell as well. They're both in the hospital. Um, they're having a fight about God. So we trust God that he could turn anything around because with God, nothing is possible. With God, all things are possible. And for God, nothing is impossible. So let's remember them in prayer. And I want to say that for this month, and only this month, so far, as the Holy Spirit have led me, I will be doing um, messages, uh, not, not, not messages, I will be showcasing. You know I do Wake the Nation, I do Words of Pearls, but I'll be doing a Wake the Nation uh, for Sundays this, this month. Uh, starting with this Sunday, the 5th, uh, Mrs. Sherry Loveday, you need to tune in. Uh, black girls, uh, listen, I posted it on my page. You got to come, you got to come tune in at Sunday at 7 o'clock. The title is Collateral Damage and Our People. Come on, you've got to tune in. L listen, let me tell you something on a serious note. God wants his people to be liberated. You know, I remembered reading, whether it's a fable or it's truth, I remember reading that, um, but, but, but the principle certainly applies, of a man that kept praying to God that he needed help. Uh, he was on the rooftop, and the, 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 no, the water wasn't that high. And so they sent someone you know, came by and he's like, no, he's waiting on God. And as the water ri rised, you know, higher, it, you know, uh, uh, another person came by. First, I think a person came by to, to help him with a rope. And then it was the little uh, canoe. And then a boat came by. And he's like, no, he's waiting on God. And he ended up drowning. And then, as they said, he went to heaven. And he said, well, God, why didn't you send help? And he said, I sent help three times. You just did not. What? So I say this to say that many times we're in situations. We do not understand what we're going through. And here, I want you to tune in, to listen, because we need to be, listen, we're already freed, but a lot of us are not freed in our minds. A lot of us are, are not aware of the things we need to do. So tune in. Um, I will be doing uh, Collateral Damage with Mrs. Sherry Loveday. The second Sunday is uh, we'll be talking about our health within Brooklyn and, you know, specifically within certain areas. 
And I, I tell you something, I learned a lot. <laughs> God is a wise God, and we ought to be wise children of God. Um, so, Mrs. K. Lawrence, and then I'll be interviewing Mrs. Danette Green, the author of Beautifully Broken. What? No. Beautifully Blessed. And then we'll be having the final Wake the Nation with for this month with our uh, my co-hosts. Uh, but the others will be, I'll just be soloing, just um, having a chat and informing us as a people, as a nation, about things that are happening in and around our communities and how we can get help. Uh, so with that being said, as I said, I, gave, I think I gave you enough time that if you didn't ha go have your, your matzah, your crackers, or your bread, and you didn't have your grape juice or your water, then, you know, it's time. So if you remembered last week, I talked about, we started with uh, the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven. Okay, so I just did one line. And now, because this is the first Thursday in February, we're doing communion, because we do communion here at LOR Radio, the first Thursday in, um, in, in each month right so this is our second communion for the year but our first communion for february and february is packed with a lot it's heart help month it's a lot <laughs> it's black history month it's uh it's it's loveuary month you know uh, it's a lot, but I, I pray that for the children of God and for us as a people, that we love each and every one every single day of our lives. A lot is happening, so we shouldn't just wait for one day or one specific month to honor and to love those that are around us, because we see what's happening in and around the nation and the world, okay? <laughs> it's, it's love you every month, man. Love, love the people around you. Love all your peoples around you, okay? All right. So, you know, Bishop said it's February month. All right. So whatever month it is for you, listen. That's what we're going to do. So... Being it's communion morning, I, I've just fast forwarded down to, um, to, to give us this day our daily bread, which is what we, we, um, a part of the Lord's Prayer, right? And as I said, I told you before, we have Matthew's version, which is longer, we have Luke's version. Now, in, in the Hebrew, Jesus actually said, Give us day by day the bread we need, right? But we have it in the English as give us this day our daily bread. Ten lanu ayam lekem chokenu. But Jesus said, Es lekem chokenu ten lanu yom yom. Give us day by day the bread we need. Day by day the bread we need right same thing right the thing is every day if you know the bible tells us that god gives us new mercies every day new bread every day new mercies every day new blessings every day hallelujah glory to god it is a daily we're supplied daily the things we take for granted but we need to be aware of so that we can give thanks more we need to be a more thankful people because the world has become a very apathetic place amongst even children of god sons and daughters of god we're living in sometimes but god and so we need to give thanks 
Now, we know that the word of God is blessed. Bless, we're blessed reading it for ourselves. We're blessed when we hear the word of God being read in our hearing. Oh, when we apply, when we hide it. You know, the Bible, I keep saying, uh, I love this, that the Bible said, and Mary, the mother of Christ, right? That every time they spoke about Jesus, she said she hid it in her heart. We ought to hide the word of God in our hearts, sons and daughters of God, because we know that Jesus later, when he unfolded the parable, he said that when we get the word, and we don't hide it in our hearts, basically. The enemy of our souls comes and robs us of it, right? So we forget. You know, sometimes you go to church and folks say, Man, the service was good. The sermon was great. And you say, well, what was it about? I forgot. The enemy of your soul just stole it, right? Just stole it. So we have to be careful. When we hear something, let us hide it in our hearts. Once we hide it in our hearts, once it's in our hearts, and we have to learn to fill ourselves with the word of God. Fill ourselves with Christ. I tell you, Bishop, you know, let me just give this little testimony here because um, on Monday, you know, I listen, I went out Sunday night. We celebrated my son's birthday, came home late, uh, had to go to the airport early in the morning. So I got like three hours, call it two and a half hours, really. I was like, technically it was three because it was a little bit over two and a half. Still wasn't enough because I've been running a lot. There have been a lot of things going on. But anyway, I tell you, God is amazing and awesome and wonderful. So he fills me up every time. Anyway, I um, I had, uh, I was waiting for parking and you know this is now uh at minutes to 10 right so finally i see someone get in their car this is in the morning i'm still awake okay guys listen so i said to the gentleman are you moving he says yes give me a minute a minute he gets out of his vehicle and he walks the way he was walking, the Holy Spirit said, look at the way he's walking. Something is up. So I said, okay. I said, all right. So I'm sitting there and I'm waiting, but I'm listening to the word. And I'm like, you know, it's all good. I'm, the song's playing. I'm talking to my daughter. I was like, okay. He comes back. <laughs> and listen, a car comes. So it's obvious this him and this person spoke and this is when he finally moves and the person pulls in i tell you i did not look at either one of them i just kept it moving i said okay god this is how they're going to play it i said before i get upset let me just fill myself with the word of god seriously i play the word fill myself and you know, the Lord eventually, he, he, he provided a spot right in front of my house so I didn't have to move even the next day. Hallelujah. I say that only to say, I share that to say, in the past, y'all know I would have been so upset. My, I would have probably sent up my pressure. You know how we get... <laughs> Listen, but I was too filled with the word of God. I'm so serious, sons and daughters of God. I was so filled with the word of God that I was like, I just went into Jesus mode. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, okay, Jesus, handle it. You know what I mean? I, I was like, this is amazing. This is not the full of the pills. I realized I was empty. I was empty. I was empty. I was full of self. I was full of self. I was full of self in the past so i relied on myself so i would get upset instead of just throwing it handle this jesus handle this my big brother handle this daddy instead of so this time i did that to god be the glory it was so freeing i i'm sharing this testimony the bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies let me tell you something when we're filled with the word of god when we hide his word in our heart when we fill ourselves with jesus that's the only thing can come out of us, okay? The Bible says, out of the abundance of our hearts, the mouth speak. Whatever is coming out of our mouth is what's filling our hearts. We ought to take notice. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. If it's pride, pride's going to come out. If it's anger, anger is going to come out. If it's lies, lies are going to come out. Whatever it is, but when it's the truth of God, that's what's going to come out. When it's Jesus, that's what's going to come out. Come on. When it's Jesus, it's whatever things are lovely, true, pure, love. Those are the things that are going to come out. I kid you not. I'm telling you. Trust God. So anyway, in, in, in Exodus chapter 16, we know that God daily, daily, day by day by day, the Bible tells us that he provided manna or bread that came down from heaven to feed the famished children of his as they journeyed through the scorched wilderness for 40 years sons and daughters of God and it didn't need to be 40 years but you see sometimes and even us as children of God sometimes we are so what is the word I'm looking for Lord oh, oh merciful God <laughs> we we tend to be stubborn at times we love to have our own way huh hard-hearted we do this we're judgmental many of us we you know we don't wait to hear the other side of the story something happens and instant many of us are, are are how you say we love to blame we throw the blame at others as children of god many of us cannot be accountable for our own actions but we'd rather blame someone else. Push the blame on someone. Judge others. But we never, oh, we're never in judgment. This is who we are as children of God. See, God chose his children to show us who we are. They depict who many of us are. And you know, it's not that we remain there. Not all of us remain there. Some of us grow, but some of us, it's but God. So for 40 years, every day that they awoke, they collected two quarts of manna per person. But sons and daughters of God, it was no ordinary food. We're talking, give us our daily bread give us our bread day by day right we're talking about that portion of the lord's prayer today as it's communion morning listen it was no ordinary food sons and daughters of god that came from heaven it was a miraculous food the bible tells us that it was sweet like honey and whether you collected a little or you collected a lot it worked out I mean, come on, you think about it, that I, I went out there, I'm supposed to get two quarts, but somehow I didn't, I took a quart, and the Lord would let that quart feed my entire family. Oh, I'm talking miracles of miracles, come on. And if you took too much, let's say there was a day I went out and I took, I took three quarts, it still sufficed. No, you know, I am like, what an amazing God. Oh, can we just sit here a little bit and just envision this? You know, some of us can see clearly, but if you can't, close your eyes and just see God making that provision. And as you see that, transition that to you. Like, think about it. You belong to God. I belong to God. When we belong to God, he takes care of us. He perfects the things that concerns us. Oh, I don't know, sons and daughters of God. Come on. We've got to. Hold on one second. Sorry. I'm just Hallelujah. Glory to God. We've got to, to pay attention, keen attention to, to God. God takes care of the poor, the homeless, the fatherless, the motherless. And even when you have a mother and a father, he's still care taking care of each and every one of us. It doesn't matter what state we're in. Once we belong to him, he takes care of us and he perfects everything that concerns us. You've got to believe this, sons and daughters of God. And so 
Let me read it for you because you might think, ah, oh, no, she's making this up. Okay, so Exodus 16, 16 through 18 reads, These are the Lord's instructions. Each household should gather as much as it needs. Pick up two quarts for each person in your tent. So so it was two quarts for each person, right? So so if you have a household of five, that would be 10 quarts, right? But let's say you picked up 11 quarts, it would still do. Let's say you picked up nine quarts, right? Or eight quarts, it would still do because that's who God... And listen, we, we, we realize this, listen... Jesus realized this principle because when he was in, when he had to feed the 5,000 and when he had to feed the 4,000, when he had to feed the 5, the 4,000 had even more, but the 5,000 had less. They had two loaves, right? Two fishes and the loaves. What did he do? Five loaves and two fishes. Yes. He broke it and the Bible said, and he gave thanks. And as he was distributing it, it multiplied. So now can you see how this manna from heaven was multiplied? See, Jesus recognized the Bible. Said, Are you imitating your daddy? Let me ask you a question. Are you imitating your daddy? Jesus imitated his father. He came and he realized, he's like, whoa, 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 these, these, these loaves here and these fishes, they're going to. Because I see, I saw Daddy do it when the children of Israel were in the desert. He multiplied, multiplied, and multiplied the food, right? Come on. And he made it sweet to the taste too. Hallelujah. The Bible said that the word of God is sweet. You know that. It's sweet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So here we go. So, <laughs> so, Hallelujah. Pick up two quarts for each person in your tent. So the people of Israel did as they were told. Some gathered a lot, some only a little. But when they measured it out, everyone had just enough. Those who gathered a lot had nothing left over, and those who gathered only a little had enough. Each family had just what they needed. You can read it for yourself in Exodus 16, verses 16 through 18. And then... In Exodus 16, further down, verse 31 reads, The Israelites called the food, what? Manna. It was white like coriander seed, and it tasted like honey wafers. Now, if you know anything about coriander seed, and you can Google it or go to the health food store, you'll see it. It's one-eighth of an inch. It's a tiny little thing. And that's what it looked like. But when I tell you, when it comes together, just like each individual snowflake, do you know each individual snowflake has a design? Each individual snowflake, when it's falling separately, it looks as if it can do nothing. But the moment it comes together, the moment it starts sticking together, what? You can make snowballs. There can be an avalanche. It can be beautiful or it can be destructive, right? So the thing about it, it is, think about the, when, when, when God puts together everything that he has for you and he puts it together in place. Oh, what a meal, right? Hallelujah. The, when, when we partake of the, the Lord's, we're partaking of the bread of heaven, Christ Jesus, the word of God. The table set before us is the bread, the bread of heaven, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. We have our daily bread in Christ. And when we read the word of God daily, come on. Are you reading daily? Daily? Are you having your daily food? How many times a day do you eat? How many times a day do you read the Bible? Some of us don't stop eating. You know what I mean? We put a, a little peanut here, a little snack there. We drink a little something here and a little something there. What if we did that with the word of God? Like every time we take a snack, we just open our Bible app and take a snack out of the word of God. Yeah, okay, all right. 
I am just speaking to myself. So, okay, to God be the glory. Praise the Lord. So, this very tiny little seed, it packed a whole punch filled with flavor. When you think of what God does for us, individually and collectively, it is so filled with flavor. How can we not thank God? His love is flavorful. Each day, he gives us new mercy, new life, new breath, new strength, new health. It's renewed. It's not the same old, same old every day. We think of it this way, but that's not what it is, sons and daughters of God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, good morning, Ija. Oh, my baby's on. Good morning, Lund. Hallelujah. If it's morning. Good morning, Rev. How are you? I just saw some folks. To God be the glory. And, you know, whatever time you join, Danette, Reverend Lee, and all the others, hallelujah. Whatever time you see this message, glory to God. <laughs> yeah, I have to say this. So I posted, you know, Facebook really does um, do things with your uh, your messages. You know how sometimes you don't see anyone? So I posted something and they sent me a message to say, oh, we're going to put you at the bottom of the list or something to that effect where like nobody will see you. I was like, oh, well, okay. All right. Let to God be the glory. God is still God. Amen. To God be the glory. God be praised. Hallelujah. Um, so the thing is, clearly, God was doing the feeding. And Jesus knew this. And he wants us to know this. Jesus is remi was reminding his disciples. And he is re reminding us today that God is our daily provider, that he provides us with renewed life, renewed breath, renewed air, renewed energy, renewed strength, and renewed bread every day. The Bible tells us that the word of God is spirit and it's life. Therefore, it's not stale. I don't care how many times and if you read Psalm 23, Psalm 91, whatever you have, Psalm 1, Psalm 121, Psalm 100, whatever your favorite scriptures are. And I'm, I'm just saying the Psalm, you know, or the Proverbs. It doesn't matter how many times. I read, lean not to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge God so that he can direct your path in the, his path of righteousness. Or I say it, it's new. There is new life into it because it's spirit and it's alive. Anything that is alive grows. You know, your plants, we are not the same. We change moment by moment, day by day. You, we can look at this. Look at your fingernails. And you can, if you watch it enough, if you study, if we study our bodies, you study the hair on your head, you study, you, 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 there are things that you will see change, even throughout the day. Look at your body throughout the day. Look at your nose. Look at your feet throughout the day. Take a look at your fingers, your hands throughout the day from morning till night. See if it's the same. You come back and tell me if it's the same the next day. Or if you're on here and you've noticed this, let me know if it's the same. Because I guarantee it's not. So the word of God is alive. We are alive. Therefore, we're changing. His mercies every day are new. Not the same mercies that I had yesterday do I have today. Not the same breath that I breathed yesterday or the same air that I breathed yesterday am I breathing today. Not the same strength that I relied on yesterday is the strength that I'm utilizing today. Not the same sons and daughters of God energy that I used yesterday am I uh, you uh, you know using utilizing today no and this is true for all of us it's renewed every day Jesus wanted the disciples when they said teach us how to pray when he gave them that template when he gave them the example he, he wants us to be grateful to be confident
cognizant to be aware of the newness of each day you see a lot of us go through our day is like oh yeah same old same old i wake up i go to work i come home i eat this i eat that blah. no come on rejoice and be glad even if it's the food you cooked yesterday, when you heat it up today, it's different. Did you know when the food is freshly cooked, it's different than when you refrigerate it? For some foods, when you first cook it, you enjoy it, it's delectable, you refrigerate it. The next day, though, there are some foods the next day that's when they sit in all the flavors are pulled together and ooh, ooh, in our mouths the same is true with the word of god you see sometimes when we hear the word of god or we read the word of god we're excited and we're all abuzz but sons and daughters of god once we start meditating we are ruminating, huh? We're ruminating, we're meditating, we're masticating, we're chewing on the word of God. And we're like, mm, we're slowly swallowing, we're going through the day, and we're laying down at night and we're thinking, wake up tomorrow morning and see. Tell me, just choose one verse, one verse, any part that the Holy Spirit gives you. Do that with it throughout the day. And you lay down with it and wake up and tell me the next morning you're up going, wait, what? Lord, hold up. All these years I've been reading this. What? Okay. All right. Okay. So let me just continue. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So anyway, Jesus was with them. And so he wanted them to be cognizant that all the provision that they have it's new, it's refreshed, and it comes from God. And he wants us to know the same and to be cognizant of it, to be aware of it. Right? Hallelujah, glory to God. And so, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It is God, sons and daughters of God, who blesses the earth. You know, we, may, we say a lot of things, but we need to really think about what the word of God says if God says the world is his right the earth is the Lord's and the fullness they are off so let me ask you something then who's in control he blesses the earth when he said earth produce trees produce animals and he took that same earth and created man and like the trees so came us from the uh, arets the earth isn't our God an omniscient omnipotent omnipresent marvelous awesome 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 God Woo! hallelujah glory to God it's communion morning by the way <laughs> yeah yes let's not forget it's communion morning. I know I know some folks are saying why is she so happy and it's communion morning how can you not be happy when you're eating the bread of life? When we eat this, our body is filled with life. Now, wouldn't you be excited? Oh, come on. So anyway, continue reading. Okay, let me continue. <laughs> not reading the word of God. Good morning to that. Hallelujah. Hey, sis, how you doing? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the thing is, God commands the earth. He blessed it and said, now produce. Huh? The earth produces food for us that we can eat raw, we can eat cooked, we can eat processed or unprocessed, right? Shouldn't we be giving God thanks then for everything, even the things we purchase day by day by day? Have you ever walked into your kitchen? You left out your kitchen the night. You walk into your kitchen the next day and you're just filled with ideas of what to cook. New recipes just pop into your mind and you just have to say, thank you, Lord. Whew, he's amazing. Listen, 
God. <laughs> uh. Hallelujah. Amen. So Deuteronomy 8 and 3 tells us, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God is not lacking in knowledge, wisdom. <laughs> he knows everything. He's omniscient. I keep saying this. Isn't it time we grasp that and just, uh, you know, look to God? You see, we are kept alive. We are sustained by the word of God. It is God's word. And the word is Christ. Are you seeing it? Can you see it? Close your eyes if you can't see it. Uh, or, or, or open your eyes, whichever way you can envision it. But I want you to envision it. The word of God. It's palpable and it's, it's alive, sons and daughters of God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God the book of John tells of the deity of Christ hallelujah glory to God well we're talking about the bread of life because it's communion morning and this was part of the our father's prayer you know a lot of times we, we, we say things by rote and we quickly go through things and we say it and we do not grasp the fullness of it. But when we take it line upon line, precept upon precept, and this is why the Holy Spirit have had me. And as I said, I was doing the, 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 the Lord's Prayer line upon line, unfortunately. No, fortunately, there's no unfortunate. We just had to fast forward ahead. So God has given us, you know, a, a little, uh, you know, he's propellers, propelling us in time. You know, straight down to give us this day. Oh, day by day, our daily bread. Oh, my God. So, hallelujah, glory to God. You see, for the, it, it was customary for the Jewish people to play, pray the following blessings over the meals that included bread. They would say, Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Meleka Holam Amotzi Lekem Min Haharetz, which means, Blessed are you, O Lord God, King and Creator of the universe, who has brought forth bread from the earth. Now, let me ask you something. Let me say something. Think about it. If we prayed this prayer every time we ate breakfast, because most of our breakfast includes bread, or maybe not. But anyway, lunch, if it's a sandwich, dinner, when we have the garlic bread, or whatever bread we have, right? If we pray that, wouldn't we be then? I don't know about you, but when I do it, I just think of Christ being raised from the dead. Remember, the bread from heaven came down to earth, sons and daughters of God. He was buried in the belly of the earth for three days, and then he arose never to ever die again. Bread of life. That came from the earth. Oh, is it just me? <laughs> I'm too excited. I can't help it. I can't. I, I honestly can't help it. I can't fake it. <laughs> I can't help it. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit of God. So anyway, I believe that when we say this, right, if we practice, you know, even if we're not saying the Hebrew, we can say, Lord, I just thank you for the, every time we have a meal, thank you for the bread that you <laughs> brought forth from the earth. The bread that came down from heaven was buried in the earth. Okay, even if that's too long, just thank you for the bread that came from the earth. Because, hello, hello. And we know you could think of it physically, literally, spiritually, all the ways, right? Because guess what? The wheat is planted and then it's processed to make the bread or the matzah or the crackers or, you know, right? And so we have the flour, whatever it is that we use, whether it's rice flour, wheat flour, 
uh, so many different, uh, we have so many different flowers today, praise God. Hallelujah, glory to God. So, and you can choose whichever, if you bake bread, you can choose whichever one you want to make your bread. So, but the thing is, when we partake on the bread from heaven, the true bread, we're imbued with the life of the bread of life. Hallelujah, glory. Thank you, Jesus. When we eat the body of Jesus, he guarantees us eternal wellness. Eternal wellness, sons and daughters of God. Don't you want that? Hallelujah, glory to God. In the here and now, he sustains us. In the here and now, he heals our temporary bodies. But there is coming a time. Hallelujah, glory to God. So anyway, Jesus taught his disciples to pray in that manner. And to give thanks for the spiritual food as well as the, the physical food. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You see, included in that prayer is the bread of life, the living bread, the communion meal that heals and sustains. It's all there in the Our Father prayer. And I just walked you through it. Today, as we partake of the communion meal, let us remember Jesus for what he did for us. And I'm going to read uh, John chapter 6, verses 47 through 58. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, Jesus said. This was Jesus speaking. Yes, Jesus said. I am the bread of life. Emphatically, he is the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread which I offer so the world may live is my flesh. This is what Jesus said. Then the people began arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they asked. So Jesus said again, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus is speaking. I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Remember, I did the communion, divine revelation, co-union, right? I talk about co-union. That was the first time I, before I read it in the word of God. Holy Spirit told me, Lord said, when you eat me, I'm in you and you're in me co-union come on sons and daughters of god that's a powerful do you understand the power that is there my lord my lord hallelujah glory to god and so hallelujah glory to god thank you jesus hallelujah thank you lord ah anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and i in him i live because of the living father who sent me in the same way anyone who feeds on me will live because of me i am the true bread that came down from heaven anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did even though they ate the manna, but will forever live sons and daughters of god mm, my god are you mimicking your daddy god Jesus, he patterns himself. You know, little children, they mimic us, their parents. It, you know, even the little boys and girls, and I, they, will put a, the, they will put on your mama's and the, their daddy's and their mama's shoes, right? They want to look like you. They want to be, they mimic the things they see you do. You ever see little kids in church? They see you pray, or, or at home. They see you praising. 
Look at the little children in church that praise. They're the ones who see their mamas and daddies praising at home. Listen. My, 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 my grandmother used to say, how you dance at home is how you're going to dance abroad. <laughs> Let's not fool ourselves. But we live in the home. They're going to see. Listen, if we go outside and act differently than how we act at home, they're going to look at us quite differently. May, may not be some respect there either. If you want your children to respect you, just be consistent with who God created you to be. It's a growing per, per, um, process. Life is a journey. So it's not perfection. Don't try to be perfect in front of your children. Because you're going to confuse them. Be real. That's all. But you know what? Be real in Christ. And let them know, listen, you may not be perfect in this, but in Christ you're perfect. That's the only place you get perfection. And you've just freed your child. You've just freed yourself to be who God designed you to be. Because it's a daily growth. We grow. I told you the place I was before is not where I am today. Glory to God. You know, I'm growing. I keep growing day by day. I learn new things every day. I learn new things about God. and learn new things. Listen, it's, it's a, it, life's a journey, sons and daughters of God. Don't stress yourself out. It's a journey. You made a mistake today. God has already forgiven you the mistake. Just don't try to repeat it. So ask him. Ask his, hold the Holy Spirit. Employ the Holy Spirit to help you not to repeat that and to move on. Be like David. Listen, I did all these things, but let me move on. Did he make other mistakes? Yes, but every time he made a new one, he was like, well, help me not to repeat that one and keep it pushing. But when we can't admit to our faults or admit to who we are, are or want the change, some of us, we speak it, but we don't really want it in our hearts. We're not fooling God. Come on. He knows everything. Even before we speak, he knows. He is the bread of life. He is our life's line. He's the lifeline for us. He's the everything that gives us life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, this is no ordinary matzah or bread. It is the bread of life because it represents the body of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so it ought to be treated with the value and the power that belongs to Christ. You see, sometimes we take communion and, and we think of it as a routine. And we just, you know, well, I'm here today. I'm, mm. No, we must take it remembering what that Jesus took my place. He took your place, what he went through. And then the power and the value. When you value something, come on. You don't throw it down. You, if, 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 if you value your, your, your bills. You don't throw them down on the floor. Uh, you might throw your pennies. And even then, if you collect those pennies, you put them collectively, they're going to add up to be worth something. So you can throw them in a bottle rather than toss them on the table and toss them on the floor. Right? I'll never forget, I had a bottle that the, the whole, it was a huge bottle. I ended up couldn't lift I wasn't able to lift it. <laughs> so all I could put in were dimes because the, the, the mouth of the bottle was small. So all I could put in, but it was a glass bottle. And so I would just throw my dimes in and, and, and a couple of years went by. The diamond itself wasn't worth a lot. I didn't, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't like saving dimes. I thought it's only 10 cents. What's that? Nothing. That was my mentality. Seriously, my mother said, it's still money. I said, you're right. Thank God for my mama. My mama said, it's still money. I'm not even going to tell you how much I saved up. I won't, but trust me. I took it to the bank. I was like, 
these dimes became all of that. And that also applies to people. Don't count people out. Don't look down. Don't be condescending. You don't know what the things, just like those coriander seeds huh? that made up that wafer. Uh, the, the, just like just like the dimes and the pennies that add up to thousands of dollars uh, that's a message for another day it's communion morning hallelujah glory to God so listen when we say Lord give me day by day the bread that I need <laughs> some people call money bread don't they that one just popped in some people call money bread in some cultures and country maybe it's everybody i don't know but anyway give us day by day the bread we need it comes from god sons and daughters of god i've said it here before there are people who have got it it happened in not that distant, I know we're in 2023, but it, it, remember when the bank in Manhattan had closed? I forgot the name of the bank. And the people went to the bank to get money and they couldn't get any money out. And what, wherever the, that branch was, it had happened. Who remembers that? There are people who went to work and when they showed up for work, there was no job. The building was, they couldn't enter. So do you still think that everything you need comes from man or another person and that it's not God that is protecting your job? He gives us the power to get wealth. He gives us the strength to go to work. He gives favor in the heart of your boss so the boss doesn't fire you. He makes sure that that boss has the contracts so that you will have a job sons and daughters of god there is so much to thank god for in the book i talk about interconnectivity and i didn't even go into it in details because i was writing another book on interconnectivity and i took out a piece out of that and i was just like but let me tell you something we are all interdependent and we are dependent on god whether you are agnostic atheist apathetic or Christian or Muslim or Jewish or Buddhist it's not the false gods it's God the one and only true God and so this morning as we partake of the bread of life let us remember that when we eat the bread of life he renews us with renewed vim vigor and vitality renewed every day he gives us a renewal in life to continue in the journey of life and so as we go forth let us remember to bless the bread of life huh? The word of God tells us, heal us, living bread, and we shall be healed. Heal us, O oh Lord, and we shall be healed. That's how you read it, right? Heal us, living bread, and we shall be healed. I'm going to turn over the next portion to Bishop, and here we have the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The great Jews, and we say, Blessed. Are you a Lord God, King and Creator of the universe? Hallelujah. Creator of the fruit of the wine. And we know that. We thank God for the cup of blessing, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the life of the flesh is in the blood, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey, yes, yes. Heal us, living bread. Yes, hallelujah. And cleanse us, wonderful blood of Jesus. Cleanse us, blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord.
Uh, Bishop asks that I read Luke chapter 22, 15 through 22. And the word of God, which is blessed, reads, Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before this, my suffering begins. For I tell you now, I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. Take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God is come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which I have given for you. Do, you. do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This is the cup of the new covenant of God. Between God, the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. But here at this table, sitting among you as a friend, is the man who will betray. Well, do we need to? Re we don't even need that part, Bishop. Seriously, in the name of Jesus, we don't need that. We not. We don't need that. The bread of life is giving us life. Amen. And so now we take the bread of life and as you eat it, remember the power and the value because it is the body of Christ, the one who took every sin, every sickness, every pain from your body into his body at the cross of Calvary, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We take of the cup of blessing, the blood of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. To God be the glory. So this morning we thank the Lord for the bread of life day by day. We thank him for today's bread that we'll receive all day throughout the day 
the renewed breath, the renewed air, the renewed life, the renewed everything. Now that we've taken, we've eaten the body of Christ and he dwells in us and we're dwelling in him as he dwells in the Father and the Father dwells in him. To God be the glory. Thank you all for tuning in and joining us. And for those who joined late, let me remind you, um, we continue to pray for the Honeywells uh, Reverend and Pastor Honeywell, Reverend Richard Honeywell and his wife, uh, Karen, Pastor Karen Honeywell that is in the hospital. Um, there are diseases that are battling them. Uh, I, I posted it on my page. There's a GoFundMe page uh, that I posted for them. Cancer, they're both battling both of them. But God is still God and he is a healer. And then remember also to tune in uh, Sunday at 7 p.m. and for the next uh, three Sundays following that I'll be doing different topics this week it will be co collateral damage in our people with our um, hold on let me just read to you a little bit of her bio because I, I, I really want you to tune in sons and daughters of God this is going to bless you this is going to bless you. I'm, I'm not giving you something that will not bless you. She's a licensed clinical marriage and family therapist. Okay. And so uh, she's a mother, she's a wife, and she's someone I've known for years. Uh, we've gone to church together. She's moved out, you know, they're living in another state now. But uh, tune in and then uh, the following Sunday, we'll be doing, you know, talking about health within our communities here in Brooklyn. There's some stats that you're going to get that is going to wake you up. And there's some things I, I, I'm not sure how to share it with you. But anyway, we'll see. Um, and then uh, the following week, I'll be interviewing the author of Beautifully Blessed, Beautifully Broken, no, Beautifully Blessed. Um, Mrs. Danette Green that is on here right there and so uh, get her book too and tune in and then we'll be doing uh, Wake the Nation with my co-host um, my Ija and Reverend Love uh, we'll, it's Black History Month so tune in it's going to be very interesting it's going to be a little different so please tune in why don't you and uh, thank you guys for listening this morning please share the message share with others especially those who are going through illnesses because God wants us listen he wants us well he wants us healed read the Bible and see if I'm am I lying Bishop am I not reading the Bible correct somebody help me <laughs> oh Bishop's not answering so I guess Thank you. Here, Bishop saying it. Beloved, I wish above all things that you what? Prosper and what? Be in health. What? As your, as your soul prosper. If you're not well, does is your soul prospering? No. If, if you're worrying about your finances, is your soul prospering? No. Come on, sons and daughters of God. We God wants us well. He wants us whole. So share the message. I'm going to upload it to my YouTube page. So for those who are not on Facebook, you can always go to my YouTube page, which is Flow, F-L-O, Chang, C-H-A-N-G, Ajita, and, and, and share it, you know. A lot of times we share a lot of things. We need to share the things of God and encourage each other in the things of God. Yeah, Bishop? Yeah. Okay, 
So, so Bishop Anderson just said, and if you're not on my page, he said you can go to his page, Basil Anderson, or Finding the Lost Sheep Center, and you will see my book, which is As the Days of Trees, So Are My People, and um, Dennett's book, which is uh, Beautifully Broken, No, Beautifully Blessed. They're on his page. They're on Danette's page as well. So if you if you are a part of her group, you can see her page. And for those who are on my page, you can see it there. And there are other folks who will post it on their pages too, won't you, sons and daughters of God? Yes, you will. And thank you for purchasing the books and for reading. More importantly, listen, I'm not asking you to purchase a book just to purchase. I want you to purchase them and read them. Because I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed. If you know anyone who's been abused, if you know anyone who's gone through some things that have been near death or have escaped death, get the beautifully broken, no beautifully blessed book. And if you want to know how to live, listen, we have more in common with the trees. Listen, we live in a fallen world, but let me tell you something. God has made provision for us to be better sons and daughters, better citizens of this earth. Get as the days of trees. So are my people. It's a blessing. Just the title alone is a blessing. So go to Amazon and get both books and share. Get them for somebody you think might need them. You know, birthdays are coming up. Get those books. Huh? Anniversaries. You know, whatever. Let me tell you, it's a blessing. Children. You know, um, uh, uh, this young lady that I know. And hey, Anne Marie. Thank you, Anne Marie. Hey, Joe. There's some folks that um, some folks said that their children need it. There are other folks that are saying uh, she's reading the book to to. Uh, the group that she she her in her establishment which is for older people so it doesn't matter what age they are ages they are if they can't read you read it to them and if they can read let them read it hallelujah glory to god so with that being said uh, i thank you for tuning in and i pray after you've taken communion i know for a certainty that the communion meal is a meal that heals, it sustains us, it keeps us in good health, and it helps us, with, it eases our pains and, it, and gets rid of the diseases. I'm telling you, sometimes it's, it's instantaneously, other times it's day by day by day as, as, as we take it. And I've been there in both instances, I'm telling you. I'm not trying to do this just to make it up. I am telling you this because it is so. So... To God be the glory. Go for it and have a blessed and wonderful day. Knowing that God loves you and me and all of us with such an unconditional, unfathomable, oh, eternal, exquisite, wonderful love. That you just go for it and experience him today in Jesus' name and for his sake. Love you guys. Have a blessed day. <laughs> I stay long today, right, Bishop? <laughs> Usually I'm running. But to God be the glory. <laughs>